previous videos, we saw visualizations, uh, we saw heat maps, correlations, some basic visualizations, uh, bar plots, count plots, etc. In this uh, video, we'll have a look at feature engineering. Now, feature engineering is uh, basically deriving new features from the features that we have already been provided. Uh, based on a lot of visualizations and uh, basically based on what makes sense. So from the attributes that we had seen earlier, while a lot of them was based on whether uh, a mobile platform was used or not, what country, what continent the user is from, what is the destination country continent, uh, the distance, there were certain other features as well, such as this check-in, check-out date, based on which uh, we can derive other sort of features. So while the check-in and check-out date by themselves may give some information, um, actually deriving other information such as what was the duration of stay, uh, how many days prior the booking was made, things like that can give a greater insight into the kind of hotel cluster that might uh, be booked by the customer. So basically this means that uh, somewhere we want to capture the idea of long trips and short trips and if that has any effect on the hotel cluster being predicted. So we, so first of all, when importing the data set, uh, the data frame, search in and search out were basically imported as object data types. So if we have a look uh, at our previous imports, so when reading this particular CSV file, those uh, check-in and check-out dates were read as object files itself, uh, as objects itself. We can add this even to this past dates, uh, such as we did in date time. But if not, once we have already loaded the data set, uh, this is another way of converting an object, which is of the type of, actually of the type of date time into actual date time format. So we basically take the, check-in date from the data frame that we have. So over here, I have created a function and the function, uh, whichever data we're passing to it is being called a data frame, uh, DF. So we take in the check-in date of that data frame and we want to infer the date time format because the date time format can be year, month, day or day, month, year, depending on various, uh, what the convention is. And in case there are any errors that are present, we are coercing it because uh, we, don't, we don't want to uh, do away with uh, certain data rows due to small errors. So that we then convert this particular uh, variable into a pandas date time format. So pandas has a method dot to date time, which converts the particular date object into an actual date time object. This is important because the date time object has the year, month, and day attribute, which we can make use of for any time we want. So we do this for the check-in date and the checkout date. And based on this, we will calculate the duration. Now, since these are of the date time format, it's a simple subtraction that we need to do, checkout date minus the check-in date. And uh, we are forcing the output also to be of the type of time delta. Okay, so that is the stay duration. We also calculate the number of prior days uh, before booking. So for that, we subtract the actual date time of booking from the check-in date. So that is the number of days prior to booking, basically the planning time. Now we have the stay duration, we have the number of days prior to booking. It may be helpful to also have the check-in uh, day, month, and year. So from the check-in date, uh, so I have uh, made use of a Lambda function over here. I'll go in detail of that. What this does is uh, Lambda is basically a one-liner function that we may want to apply to any particular uh, data frame or uh, attribute of the data frame. So here we take in the search check-in date. And on this, we want to apply a function where we take each check-in date. So that is our X. So each instance of this check-in date and we take the day from it. Okay, so it's basically like search check-in dot day. And that will give the day for the search check-in. 
And since we don't want to create a separate function for it, uh, we can create a Lambda function, which is basically an inline function, which is applied on a particular data frame or a data column. And then each instance of that uh, data is taken and then whatever is the logic that can be put in over here. So likewise, we extract the day, month, and year from the check-in uh, date, which is there. And we save that as C in day, C in month, and C in year. And we return this particular data frame. So I'll execute this function, convert uh, date into days, okay, and give our uh, train data set to it. So now if we have a look at the training information, date time is uh, date time. We have as previous all the attributes that were present. Check-in and check-out uh, date time uh, is saved as date time. And here is where our new attributes have formed. So we have the state duration that we calculated, which is a floating point number. We have the number of days prior to booking, which is also floating point. The check-in day, month, and year, which we have calculated. So these get added to the original data frame. If you have a look at the head of the data frame, which shows the top five rows, which are there, we see we have all the attributes as before and the five attributes that we have created, the five features that we have created get added to this. Now, this is important because we want to somehow capture the date information, which is there in the data, because that is important in when bookings are made. Uh, it may be an important attribute to figure out uh, which hotel cluster is being booked. But uh, it's not something that can be given to the machine learning model uh, just in its raw format, right? So there is a need to convert this date time somehow into an integer, into a numerical format, integer or float. And uh, that's why we have uh, created these features, which is the state duration, number of days prior to booking, check in day, month, and year. Now we haven't done the same for the checkout date. We could do uh, see out day, month, and year. But since we already have the state duration, right? That information is getting captured with uh, the check-in attributes, uh, day, month, and year, and the state duration. So there is no need to have another uh, checkout day, month, and year. So this was about creating new features. Uh, in the next video, we'll have a look at uh, some other plots that we want to see and then go on and see, um, fill in the missing values and go on for modeling.